Hello, hello everyone. Now, because I recently featured the Georgia, I'm going to follow it up by featuring the Ohio, and the counterpart to the Montana, the Tier 10 American battleship, featuring only eight 457mm guns. As always, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to dropping a subscription on the channel. I really appreciate it. But thank you very much, my dudes. Moving on, the Ohio. I'm going to be comparing this ship a lot to the Montana because the Montana is one of the oldest battleships in the game and most people are very familiar with it, so comparisons uh, kind of reflect pretty well on the ship itself. It gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. First of all, it is a classic Montana hull, which means same 96.3k health pool, same 37% torpedo belt. It's a very classic Montana hull, but there are actually some differences. First of all, the turrets on the Ohio are significantly tankier than those of the Montana. I think the Montana turret face is something like 470, Ohio turret face is 540. So breaking these turrets when they're nosing is significantly harder. They are tanky tanky beasts, which of course allows you to build secondary survival as a module without any issues because there's almost no risk of your turrets actually breaking. Unless of course you get shot in the side or behind the turrets or whatever. You know, the way all turrets tend to break. Another difference is that the Ohio is actually slower than the Montana. The Montana does 30 knots, Ohio only does 28. In return though, the Ohio gets a faster rudder shift at 18.6 seconds, whereas Montana stock rudder is 22.2, which is actually the worst tier 10 rudder shift in the game. So the Ohio is slower, but slightly more nimble. The concealment values are identical, which as you can see with this full stealth build I'm running is 14 kilometers. Not that stealthy, but uh, not really the end of the world. You can play around with it. Another difference is the guns themselves. Now obviously penetration values, it's probably clear to everyone because you have 457 millimeter guns the penetration of the Ohio is a fair bit better than the Montana roughly 10% better at long ranges so it is a benefit you pen about 560 ish at 15 kilometers I've actually more like 580 and the Montana pens like 530 so it's a roughly oh here's by the way I'm seeing a small Smolensky smoking up and shooting me so I lock on to the Venezia behind him to get improved dispersion and then I wait for him to pull the trigger on me and once he pulls the trigger note that when you shoot Smolensk in the smoke you have to aim a bit lower than you normally would and with this combination of tricks of spotter plane lock on on Venezia and aiming a bit lower than I should I devastate the Smolensk in the smoke. But that's something I'm gonna get into in a lot more detail when I do my guide on stealth firing because there's a lot of tips and tricks you can do to basically punish people who think they're safe in smokes or just safe being invisible. That's for the next for the next super unicom commentary. Moving on, as I said, about 10% better penetration at long ranges. That doesn't mean that Ohio gets all the goods though, because Montana actually has better range. Montana's range is 23.7, whereas Ohio has 21.7. It's not really that big of a deal. It is a downgrade, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, worth noting is that Ohio actually gets a reload of 27.5, whereas Montana has 30. So this kind of helps alleviate the issues of having less guns. In fact, the guns of Ohio are superior in multiple ways because the turret traverse is basically Kremlin super fast. It's 30 second turret traverse 480 degrees, which is much faster than the Montana's 45. I make a mistake here. I'm trying to turn my guns to blab the Udaloy. I underestimate the Montana's penetration. And it shows that, well, because it is a Montana hull, um, the side the plus side plating is really not that tanky and especially at long ranges you are fairly easy to citadel same thing as the Montana has and I eat two unfortunate citadels well I deserve them I gave him a lot of broadside trying to blap that Udaloy and I got punished for it moving on though faster reload much faster, faster turret traverse better penetration less range less guns your he um, your fire chance is much higher as well should you choose to shoot he but montana is actually a much better fire starter because it has so many more guns what matters is of course ap and you do lose to the Montana and APDPM, but it's actually not as much as one might expect. Because of the improvements in reload and because your AP has such high alpha damage, uh, you actually only have 275k to Montana's 324. So the gap isn't really as large, 
as one might expect. Um, in comparison, for example, the gap between Conqueror is basically the 457 mm Conqueror has something like 20% less damage or DPM. The gap is not quite as large um, or between the Ohio and the Montana because of this improved reload. The AP Alpha, as I mentioned, it's brutal and the penetration is very effective and uh, as you can probably tell, the dispersion is good. It's not Thunder dispersion though. This is something I want to highlight. This is nothing like the Thunder. The guns are good, the guns are pretty reliable, but the dispersion is absolutely not what you will see on the Thunder. And this is something that needs to be highlighted as well. You can't... The, the th it's not like the Ohio is just better Thunder. Uh, no, the Thunder's guns are in a class of their own, and the Ohio doesn't quite compete. It does have other advantages, though. Namely, it's got that Massachusetts heal that the Georgia has as well, which means your heal reloads with the full build in 36 seconds, which means you actually have really, really incredible sustain. The enemy team is pushing into a cap, and everyone from my team is running away, so I'm trying to slow down a bit, and basically I'm going to play the anchor here. I'm going to try to tank the entire team and stop them from getting our cap, uh, because I worry that we will lose if my team just allows them to steamroll our cap. No one else is interested in helping. I'm, I'm pinging them, trying to get them to help, but they're not very interested that they want to rush the enemy into their base so I guess it's all up to me. Still though, the fast heal means that you can sustain and survive situations where many others would not. AFK was gone, I have to maneuver around him so I don't accidentally get stuck. And another advantage worth mentioning is that it's got Massachusetts secondaries as well, which means it's got 9.5 game range on the secondaries, unlike Montana 7.6. This of course, and it's also got better DPM, 309 to Montana's 270. This makes it, well, basically the best tier 10 secondary monster. Well, I mean, the Corrosa Corforce is competition. Corrosa Corforce reaches something like 280k, I think, 270k DPM. Uh, of course, they get better penetration because German that's the German battleship gimmick or the German gimmick. They get better penetration on the HE. But in terms of just raw DPM, uh, the Ohio is actually the king. Worth mentioning is that the AA is also fantastic. Well, actually, no, it's pretty decent. I'm surprised. I'm looking at the values right now. I thought it was fantastic, but this is somewhere where the Montana actually beats it quite handily. The short range DPM, the Montana has a 100 AA DPS advantage. And on the mid range, the Montana has a 240 DPS advantage. I take that back. The Montana has significantly better AA at close, mid, uh, long range is identical, but of course long range is the flank which can be dodged by competent carrier players So that means that the Ohio is a easier target. In fact, looking at the raw values almost deals half less continuous DPS so Montana does have advantages, but ultimately especially with these upcoming changes uh, Where they are planning on changing IFHE and planning on giving cruisers a bit more armor it means that Ohio's 457mm guns will be able, able to overmatch all of this changed armor. Because 457 overmatches 30mm of plating, whereas Montana's 406s only overmatches 27mm of plating. This is of course a huge advantage, because well, you can just shoot these angled cruisers and you can just blap them. You can just blap, blap them regardless of any angling. And Montana cannot do that. And being a tier 10 battleship that can't do that, in comparison, is rough. The secondaries, you note that I'm reversing so I can get my secondaries in on this Montana. I'm still sustay, still fighting to defend this cap. Basically everyone else has run away and I'm tanking four ships. I got five ships targeting me here. And I'm just tanking them and quite comfortably sustaining them. Because, well, in a situation like this where the thunder would probably melt, that 38mm deck armor and upper belt and the fact that it doesn't, doesn't have quite that vulnerable citadel means that I don't have too many issues sustaining and just defending this objective. Of course, getting rid of the Smolensk, that DPM monster, made life a lot easier as well. The faster traverse means that you can pretty flexibly just switch between multiple targets, take pot shots at anything that is giving you the best broadside, and punish them whenever you can. So, if you do get to brawl, the Ohio is quite strong. Secondaries, fast reloading heal, super fast turret traverse, and good penetration, able to overmatch cruisers. It's got a lot of tools. It helps it be a very, very strong brawler. The only downside is, of course, the vulnerable citadel. 
But ultimately, in terms of combat efficiency, I just think the Ohio is a much better Montana. I don't think there's really any way around it. When you're under pressure, um, I have Halsey by the way, so I got Confederate, which means I hope my hit hard talent, which of course means that my reload just got a significant boost, which is very, very scary. I would Montana would have to wait another 36 seconds to get a heal off here. I can already pop my heal because I got that fast cooldown. Uh, it looks like my guns are reloading about 16 seconds now. That is the combination of Halsey, AR, and of course the improved reload on this Ohio guns. Note that I'm not running the reload module, I'm running the improved dispersion module. I think it's far superior on these American battleships. And it just it feels filthy at times. The secondaries are just shredding him. I mean, this guy is being eaten alive by the secondaries. And even then, I, I swear Expert Loader uh, HE with Halsey. I blap him for another bit, break his torpedoes. And now he's got a permanent fire. And I can just start focusing on the Vladivostok because I'm pretty sure my secondaries and fire will finish off this Udalai. The poor guy is trying to run, but it's just too much incoming damage. Should we throw one more volley at him? The fire looks pretty good. He bumps into the... Um, uh, ship and I can't resist taking a pot shot, but it wasn't actually necessary because, well, he's gonna burn to death regardless. Meanwhile, my secondaries have already started another fire on the Vladivostok. This is this advantage of just having efficient secondaries firing at anything within range. Note that it has that improved uh, dispersion on the secondaries, so I'm not even I'm not actually running manual secondaries here. This is full tank build, Ohio. Um, these secondaries are just very very accurate. But it also gives me broadside, surprisingly, I don't get a citadel, but I do get the crowd gun, and once again, my heal is again on cooldown, ready to be used. And even though I lost took a lot of citadel damage early in the game, which makes healing much, much harder, that fast reloading heal allows me to efficiently use it. Venezia, sap, always a threat. Um, if I was low HP, I would um, angle significantly more, but I'm kind of greedy, trying to get the kill here, trying to land some citadels on this guy. The shells are slow, which means just like well, all American battleship shells, so you need to take a significant lead. Overall though, if the Thunder is a long-range ship and the Georgia is kind of mid-range, I would say Ohio is more of a mid to close range. If you can get opportunities to push in, you want to take them. Ohio does okay at long ranges and at medium ranges, but if you get to push in, if you get to utilize all these strengths, which is the secondaries, which is this faster rudder shift, which is the fast reloading heal, if you get to utilize all, and of course the fast turret traverse, if you get to utilize all these things, it really is a scary, scary ship. Once again, another battleship would have died, fast reloading heal allows me to sustain. Venetia thought he had me, nope, I'm healing again, and he's not getting the kill. I'm hoping to actually secure him so I could get a 6th kill, because that would look nice on the commentary. But looking at the detailed report, considering I started this game by eating 2 citadels, the, usually when you eat citadels it really uh, hampers the battleship, because you can only heal 10% of citadel damage in battleships. You heal 50% of normal pens and you heal 100% of fires, but normally eating citadels early on in the game makes battleship life really, really difficult. I ate two citadels and I still had no issues in getting my Dreadnought reward. And we got a devastating confederate, first blood, and a kraken. Five kills, four citadels, 72 hits. Not really the highest damage, but this game wasn't so much about the damage as it showed just how tanky this thing can be if they can't get your broadside. And if you can just sit there and delay and delay and delay. Looking at the team score. Once again, not really the most impressive, 2.4k, but I pretty much single-handedly held up their entire push. They couldn't get past me. They tried, they tried to melt me, they tried to get rid of me on the way, they just couldn't. They had no way of bypassing the Ohio. It's not an e easy ship to just bypass it. We might be slow, but that fast heal, the secondaries, the guns, it's a nasty obstacle to bypass. In fact, if we look at the detailed report, I tanked 144,000 damage and look at my potential. 3.4 million. This wasn't even a long game. This was like a 13 minute game, 13 and a half minute game, and that was still 3.4 million tank. So, Ohio is probably the tankiest American battleship out there by a large margin. None of, I don't think any of them really come close. That combination of fast reloading heal and that large health pool just means that you don't really have too many issues of just cycling through them. Even if you get unlucky and you eat citadels early on, that combined with these guns, the secondaries, it's a monster. 
Ohio is a very, very good ship. I don't think it's quite as good as... Um, in fact, I think the uh, Kremlin is by far the best tier 10 battleship, followed by Thunder, which is also honestly very borderline. I, oh, well, the Thunder is pretty much overpowered. The guns are just too insane. Uh, if the Kremlin didn't exist, it would be the top dog. And after these ones, well, I have a hard time not rating the Ohio as the third one. It's just very, very good. And there, there can be some argument made with the Bon Jovi. Uh, I can actually, if you guys want, I can feature the Borgung, a commentary on that thing. I've had some pretty monstrous games in that one. But that thing, of course, has 380mm guns, which you can angle against. Cruisers don't really angle against the Ohio. They get blapped by the Ohio. Let me show you guys my recommended build for the ship. Right, as always, let me start with the modules. Consumable-wise, premium damage con and premium heal. You got this super fast reloading heal, make use of it. Make use of your advantage. So, and finally, spotter plane. Very useful for those smoke firing or blind fires or whatever snipes you want to make. Upgrade-wise, you can absolutely run the auxiliary mod, better AA, and keeping those secondaries alive. As I mentioned, this thing actually has better armor on the turrets than the Montana. 540. Nice, I actually remember correctly. Uh, whereas Montana has four... Oh, I said 470. It was actually 457. That's less than I remember. So the gap is pretty big. 457 to a pretty significant 540. So Ohio's turrets are just straight up tankier. They do have some additional weaknesses. 305, 241, 184. Oh, never mind. I take that back. The differences aren't actually that large. The Ohio turrets are just straight up tankier. Well, obviously that makes this mod a very easy pick because I don't remember actually losing my turrets once in the Ohio. They are that tanky. Additional tankiness, secondary range and accuracy. So you get that juicy, 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 what is 9.4k range without even having anything, anything slotted, without even building for them any more than that. Additional tankiness, concealment, better dispersion on these guns. I think I might be... Am I missing the flag? No, I was using the flag. I wonder why I said 9.5 came range then. I remember it being 9. Point, oh well, that was my bad. Correcting myself right now. Build-wise though, I'm running standard Battleship Captain. That's all you need. That is Priority Target, Adrenaline Rush, Superintendent, Fire Prevention, Concealment Expert, Expert Loader, and then, of course, Expert Marksman. Note that because this thing already has such fast turret traverse, if you use Expert Marksman with Halsey, your turret traverse on the Ohio is 25.7 seconds. Yes, I, I think Des Moines has, uh, what, 30 seconds stock? I think you just you straight up get a faster turret traverse than the Des Moines. So yeah, the Ohio turrets are just completely ridiculous. That's cruiser levels of turret traverse with this build. And finally, of course, Jack of all trades to make that damage con and heal even faster. This is my standard battleship build. I love it. I think it's versatile. I think it works against everything. And it just allows the Ohio to make use of all its strengths without any issues. You could potentially trade Expert Marksman because you don't really need it. You could trade it for maybe High Alert for even faster damage con, if you so choose. Uh, the benefits, of course, of having this build is that you can literally move this captain to any ship. Any, pre, any any battleship, US battleship premium that you want, uh, this build will be perfectly fine. Flag-wise, normal battleship flags, which is reduction in fire, reduction in flooding, healing, and then we add in speed, faster consumables, secondaries, and actually fire chance, because it affects your secondaries. So that gives your secondaries that juicy 10% fire chance, 3.3 second reload, and 9.4 km range, which means they can actually deal a fair bit of damage. Even if they don't have the penetration, they shred destroyers, and they tend to start a fair bit of fires. Overall though, Ohio is, in my opinion, just a significantly better Montana. Uh, I, I can't see any other way of looking at it. The guns, just guns are better, the hull is better because of the secondary. Secondary is better than AA for the simple reason that AA does so little these days. Wargaming has nerfed AA into the ground. If a carrier wants to strike a Montana, it doesn't care about Montana's AA, it strikes it anyway. Whereas secondaries will actually give you a real benefit compared to AA, which is so gimped. 457 overmatch, faster turret traverse, faster reload. It's hard to not see Ohio as a form of power creep for battleships. Anyway, 
that was my commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys later.